Hello there and welcome to Speed Skating Deconstructed. What makes a skater great? Ting Yu Gao today had a great 500. This gentleman from China, 24 years old, he won the uh, bronze medal in the last Olympics in the 500 meter, great 500 meter skater, and today proved it once again with a victory. Um, the things that, by the way, I, I released a video on this race earlier today, but it was blocked by an outfit called In Front Sports. I've never heard of them, don't know what they own here that uh, that they claim, but they blocked my video. And I, I'm, I'm thinking that they may have blocked it. Um, they didn't like the, f I showed the entire race in regular time. So if you want to see the entire race in regular fast motion, um, you're going to have to find it online. You can find it in virtually every country. There's There are sources to get the live feed from ISU, and I get it here in America for $5.00. So it's not a big deal. It shouldn't be. So if you want to see the live races, boy, sure, be sure to do it. But I can't show that to you here. I'm going to try to make that through the copyright thing and just do um, my usual analysis of, of certain s segments of the race. So let's look at his opener first. What we notice right away is he's so dynamic, really super flexible, and super deep. And working against that skate right away. Watch how that skate comes down. And he's driving against it with everything he's got and driving everything forward. Look at this extension here. Very dynamic. So that's what you want to see as a sprinter. And look how open this clap is. You know things are happening when you're really opening it that hard, that far. So just excellent opener. From this other angle, you can just see how he's got so much into the ice and he's already skating. Just really good. And here's a great shot of his power inside. When I mean inside, it's under his hips. It's powers down into the ice really, really hard. Just like crushing it under him. That's a little sloppy there, but he's opening. So he had a little mistake there. But again, look at the power. So great drive forward. Beautiful. So getting down that 100 in a hurry. Synchronized, deep, and great flexibility, great extension. For a sprinter, I'm I will comment on extension. I don't use the term for distance skating. But look at his turn here. This is the other thing that makes this a remarkable skater is the drive forward against that skate and how early he is. Early means at, when that skate comes down, he is on it. And he's exhausting the push prior to set down. So he ex exhausts the right prior to the left set down. Then when the left is down, look at this blade angle. I've talked about that. His blade angle is great. His knee is in under his chin, not bowed out here, like we've seen with other skaters. And he's therefore able to get purchase, really get drive on that skate as he drives forward with that right and then comes down already pushing. So a great phrase is push before you push and be done before you start. If you do that, you'll be early. So just think, once, just push on the skate you're on until it's done. Do not put the other skate down until that one is finished. Not earlier. Then you'll have conflict. But look at this drive. Learn from this. It's absolutely beautiful. So that's the second thing. Third thing I want to, I want to show you his straightaway here, briefly. A little rough around the edges. And he's, his emphasis is a little late, a little out to the side. See that? Kind of coming down and then drop and then sliding that skate out this way. You want to see more of a carve here, driving down and driving more this way. However, because he's sitting deep and because he pushes down, he gets a lot out of his straightaway nonetheless. And it's still very good. He's a very narrow guy, and I've talked about this before. Much, much harder for narrow guys to get out over the skate, um, as well as, as well as uh, 
a wider framed individual. But he does better as he goes down the straightaway. But again, competent straightaways, not the prettiest, but they do the job. But the main thing is he's sitting deep and he's putting a lot of pressure into the ice. And those two things are basics. And the third thing I wanted to share with you about his skating this man is 5'11", 157, 1 1.8 meters, 71 uh, kilos. That's a very light individual. And in the old days, outside in snow and sleet and frosty ice and friction, the biggest guys did the best a lot of times. You had to be huge, muscular, and big. Inside an arena with clap skates, the whole sport has evolved. You're seeing skaters that are smaller do better than bigger skaters. And he's got a, a slight frame. He's 5'11", 157, 1 1.8 meters, 71 kilos. That's, for, for example, compared to Laurent Dubreuil, he's 10 kilos heavier and only an inch taller. So he's pushing a lot more mass out there. Talk about Pavel Kalishnikov. He's 20 kilos more, almost 20 kilos more than this skater and only 2 inches taller. So he's pushing so much mass. You need to use so much more energy to push all that mass around the ice. This man is lean and slender and more aerodynamic, but the, the main thing is his power to weight ratio is way high, way high relative to the other guys. So think about that as, as you're, you coach your skaters or as if you're a skater, you don't want to really bulk up anymore. You want to be efficient and economical. That's it for this time. Uh, please subscribe, um, and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you.